Our next unit is Unit 4 on Transformational Geometry. Our first module in Unit 4 is Module 9, Transformations and Congruence. And our first lesson in Module 9 is 9.1, Properties of Translations. Let's start off with some terminology, and then we'll get into applications of properties of translations. Our first term is on what is called a transformation, and we're going to be spending all of Module 9 in all of Module 10 focusing on transformations. A transformation can be defined as a function that describes a change in the position, size, or shape of a figure. Now there's four basic types of transformations which include translations, reflections, rotations, and dilations. And it's translations that we're going to be focusing on in this lesson. There is some additional terminology that apply to all transformations so we'll get to that before we actually go ahead and define what a translation is. Next term is for what is called a pre-image, and that's the input of the transformation. Now that's the definition that the book gives. An easier way of remembering that is just, it's the original figure. It's the shape that you start the problem with. So write that down. It's the original figure in the problem. Write that down. And then we also have what is called the image, which is the output of the transformation. So you start with the pre-image, you apply the rules and the transformation to the pre-image, and you end up with the image. And I know that might not make sense now, but once we get into some examples, hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense. And our last term before getting to some examples is the actual definition for our lesson today, which is translation. And a translation is a transformation that slides a figure along a straight line. So picture a figure, any sort of figure, and you're just sliding it from one place to another. You're not twisting it, you're not rotating it, you're just moving it from one location to another. That's a translation. So let's take a look at how we can identify the rule for a translation and also use the rule for a translation to identify the image of the graph. For our first example, we have quadrilateral ABCD and our directions for this problem tell us that the figure shows quadrilateral ABCD we want to graph the image of ABCD after a translation of five units left and three units up. Now in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to take each point. We're going to take all four of these points, and one at a time, we're going to move the points five units left and then three units up. So let's start with point A. We're going to start with point A, and again, we're going to take point A, move it five units left, and then three units up. So starting with A, we move one, two, three, four, five units to the left, and then one, two, three units up. And so that's where we put our first point. Right there. Now we, when we name that point, because we got that point by translating point A, we're going to name that point A prime. Okay, it's not A to the first, it's not A apostrophe, that is called A prime. So we're going to keep doing that with the, with the rest of the points. Next we're going to go on to point B, and again, five units left. So one, two, three, four, five, and three units up, one, two, three, and that's where we put our point for point B prime. So we put our point, and we call that point B prime. Next let's move on to point C. So starting here, five units left, one, two, three, four, five. And then up 1, 2, 3, to end up at negative 2 comma negative 2. And we call that point C prime. And finally for point D, starting at point D, move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units left. Then 1, 2, 3 units up, ending up at negative 4 comma 1. So we plot our point, and we call it D prime. Now we go ahead and connect all those points in the same way that the original figure is connected. So A to B, B to C, C to D, my stylus doesn't always work, and then D to A. All right, and if you look and compare the red figure that we have there to the original blue figure, we'll see that they are the exact same size, they're the exact same shape, it's just that their location is in a different place. We've taken the figure and we've slid it five units to the left and three units up. Other than that, everything is the same. We didn't turn it. We didn't flip it. All we did is visually we picked up figure A, B, C, D off the graph, 
slid it five units left and three units up, and plopped it back down to get our new figure, which we call our image, which we call A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. All right, so that's what a translation looks like. It's picking up a figure, moving it from one location to another, setting it back down, and calling all of the points prime. There's no turns, there's no flips, the size and shape stays the exact same. In addition to the figures being the same size and same shape, we also have to talk about the fact that they are the same orientation as well. And again, that means no flips, no turns, or anything like that. The orientation does not change, just the, just the location of the figure. Now the rule that we use here, written out in words to make it relatively easy for us. It tells us move it five units up, and five units left, and then three units up. There are other ways of communicating the rule for translations or transformations in general. So let's take a look at another one of those ways of communicating the rule for the translation. For our second example, we are given triangle MUR, and we're given a rule this time that's written out more mathematical than our previous way. Uh, in example one, this one tells us that x comma y goes to this arrow right here, we pronounce that goes to x plus 2 comma y minus 4. So essentially what we're going to do, we're going to take each x value and add 2 to it, and each y value and subtract 4 from it. Now we can think of this in very much the same way as we, what we did for example, example 1. When we take x plus 2, we need to think about, all right, which direction are we moving? Are we moving up, down, left, or right if we're adding 2 to our x values? Well, our x values, we should know that our x values are here. So that means that we're moving our x values left or right. If we're adding 2 to our x value, that means we're moving each point 2 units to the right. So x plus 2, move the figure 2 units to the right. Then y minus 4, we have our y values here. y minus 4 tells us that, oh man, y minus 4 tells us that we're going to be moving each figure down, why do you keep moving? Down four values. Okay? So x plus 2 means right 2, y minus 4 means down 4. So each value gets moved right 2, then down 4. So let's start with m. We're going to move point m two units to the right and four units down. So from this point, we're going to go right 1, 2, and then down 1, 2, 3, 4 values, and that's where our point m prime is going to go. So there's our point, and we call it m prime. So the same thing with point u. Again, from here, two units to the right, and then down one, two, three, four, to end up right here. So here's our point, and we label it u prime. And finally, for r, we start off at point r, move two units to the right, and then down four units until we get to right here, and that is where r prime is going to go label the point R prime, then we go ahead, connect the points so that they're in the same orientation as the original figure. All right, so our pre-image here looks the exact same as our image. They are congruent to each other, meaning they're the same size and shape, and since they're a translation, their orientation is the same as well. Now guys, I'm using a stylus to try and write all these on my iPad. You should be using a your ID or an illustrator to draw every single one of your lines so they look identical. Make sure you're using a straightage for each line. For our last example, we have two triangles. We have triangle TRZ, which is our pre-image, and then we have triangle T prime, R prime, Z prime, which is our image. And what we have to do for this is we have to figure out the rule that gets us from our pre-image to our image. So we have to think to ourselves, all right, what do we do to get from this point here over to this point here? So we can see that to get from here over to here, we need to go up one and then to the right, one, two, three, four, five units. So if we take to get from point T to T prime, if we translate that one unit up, and five units right, that gets us our rule for the entire translation. One unit up and five units right.
Now, if we wanted to write that as a rule, we would need to think, all right, which one of these, the one unit up or the five units right, which one of those controls the, the x variable? And it's five units right is, is what we would put with the x. So we would take x plus five. One unit up would be y plus one. So it would look like this. Our rule using the other form of notation would be x comma y goes to x plus five comma y plus one. So with that, I hope you have a better understanding on Module 9, Lesson 1, Properties of Translations. I forgot to write down the goal for this lesson, so I'm going to give that to you now. Make sure you write this goal down at the bottom of your notes, otherwise you will not be, get full credit for your notes. The goal for this lesson to, is to understand the properties, the properties of translations as well as how to apply a translation rule to slide a pre-image to the form of the image. If you have any questions on this lesson, be sure to write them down so that we can go over them together in class.